25 minutes. Mark Moreno joins us, and I'm blitzing through a bunch of key news that ties into this. Bill Gates admits there are death panels, and they're a good idea. Obama's having to admit your insurance premiums are going to go up. It all ties into this environmental population reduction cult. And now the U.N. came out last week and said, we're getting rid of the global warming hype. We got a whole new group of scare tactics, and we're going to target human population and say we've got to reduce that. But then I've got a Chinese government report saying their population's been decimated and it's screwing up their society. Here it is, London Independent. China rethinks its controversial one child policy. That's coming up after Mark Moreno leaves us. I tried to get to this on the Sunday show, but didn't. But we will cover that key intel coming up at the bottom of the hour. Uh, Mark Moreno runs the climate website, climatedepot.com, the premier site exposing this fraud uh, for the Committee for Conservative Tomorrow. Uh, and, of course, uh, he's also uh, worked with the Republicans on the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works and is really the guy that helped educate um, Senator Enhoff and others and worked for him. And I wanted to get Mark on. We've got Lord Moncton on, had been on about a month and a half, uh, Thursday for a full hour because – You've got Pachari nine months ago saying Climate Gate wasn't even real, now admitting, okay, we just made up all this stuff about melting Himalayan uh, glaciers and all the rest of it, and we have hidden the decline, but it's still for a good reason. And yeah, we made a lot of money moving industry out of Western Europe and England and the U.S. to India, but that's okay. And now you have the U.N. IPCC lead author rips IPCC's claims as outright false, you have another IPCC leader, a Santer, earlier last year saying, yeah, we took out other top authors who didn't agree with us and said there wasn't uh, an increase in temperature, actually a decline the last decade. So all of this is going on, but they don't care. They st Al Gore still goes on the news and says, peer-reviewed, not one scientist on Earth disagrees. You don't think the moon landings happen if you question us. So I want him to... He had been on, I don't know, four or five months, recap all that's unfolded. Because if you thought Climate Gate was big, it just gets more outrageous and more insane. I mean, just a gaggle of lying fraudsters who want to create a bunch of collectivist taxes. I've got CNBC reporting on world government funded by carbon taxes that you pay to private banks. Madoff, uh, Ken Lay, Al Gore came up with a lot of these things. I mean, this is a group of swindling slime bags. And uh, Mark Moreno joins us to go over uh, and, and, and chronicle all of this. Uh, but meanwhile, they're over in England saying they want to arrest climate deniers. And saying they want to make it illegal and saying, we need to, all over the British news, we've, we've read the headlines, we need to get authoritarian. If the public's too dumb to accept carbon uh, tyranny, we'll just force it on them. I mean, this is just a gaggle of crooks that want to run our lives. Mark Moreno, good to have you on with us. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy to be here. Uh, you, interesting thing, you brought this up uh, about forcing it on us. We had the New York Times, Tom Friedman. Uh, who earlier this year lauded China's environmental policies, and he said, and I quote Tom Friedman, who lives in a mansion, by the way, in suburban Maryland, one party can just impose politically difficult but critically important policies needed to move a society forward in China, unlike this messy democracy where they can be thwarted. And what's interesting is that right after he said that, China came out and did all these draconian carbon uh, limits on some of their industry, and they, they had complete havoc. People couldn't even flush the toilet in some parts of China. I mean, this is what they want. They want a one-party rule, a green rule. They openly talk about global governance, but you asked for some of the updates here. What is happening is hilarious. I call it the Dan Rather uh, defense. Remember the Bush National Guard documents, shown to be a forgery, shown to be a hoax. But Dan Rather's defense at the time was, well, you know, it really doesn't matter if the documents, the story was accurate, but the documents may have been false. And what they've now done is they, they, the United Nations IPCC climate panel that shared the Nobel Prize uh, with the masseuse in chief, or with Al Gore, the former vice president, they literally have now said, yes, there's all these errors, and this was wrong, and yes, we admit that the governments handpicked the scientists that joined us, and they'd only pick warmest scientists. Yes, we admit that only dozens, uh, only a few dozen scientists actually looked at whether CO2 actually has a warming impact. Yes, we admit to all these different scandals, and, and the new inquiry that came out um, last, a couple weeks ago was really devastating to the U.N., but they're basically saying, all oh, that doesn't matter because we still got the science right. Sure, we messed up the process. Sure, we, sure we have.
had a bunch of con men doing this, and sure, we admit to this, and sure, this happened, but it doesn't affect the underlying science. It's the exact defense Dan Rather used back in 2004, saying the, the fake documents don't mean the story wasn't true. And that's where the United Nations is right now, and they expect us to take them seriously. Well, Mark, uh, I mean, I mean, going back here, though, um, first they denied that Climate Gate was what it really was, showing their internal fraud premeditatedly. Yes. And now they're just still driving forward uh, with all of this. And, how, I mean, how do we counter these people? Newt Gingrich is still running around saying we need carbon taxes. Uh, uh, Glenn Beck told USA Today that he thinks global warming's real. I mean, I mean uh, the issue is a lot of Republicans and conservatives are still going along with this. Well, I will say that in terms of Newt Gingrich, Newt Gingrich sat on a sofa with Nancy Pelosi, and he still defends that decision in an ad for Al Gore out in front of the Capitol. That was outrageous. Now, I think the Glenn Beck quote, I, I think that was in USA Week, and I believe Beck was being facetious with the reporter by saying he believes that the globe is warm, but he still questions mankind's role. Um, but in terms of you know looking at the, at the political and scientific climate right now, the movement as absolutely dead. The problem is there's a thing called zombies and the undead, and this can be resurrected as quickly as a lame duck session of Congress, as quickly as Obama ordering his EPA to start regulating CO2 because Congress wouldn't do it. So we're well, not they've announced the that they've, I mean, they've announced, scam. they've announced they're doing that. They're going ahead with it. They are. They're trying to say it's going to be moderate, watered down, but there's a couple ways. Congress can try to pass a law uh, restricting the EPA's ability. Obama's already said he'll veto it. And then all we're going to have left with are the courts. And, of course, uh, you know, the longer Obama's in, the more he gets to stack the courts, and then particularly the Supreme Court, which actually uh, opened the door for this. I think it was either 2007 or 2008, now the big Supreme Court case, that allowed us to regulate CO2 as a pollutant. Think about that. For the first time in human history, we're regulating what we exhale from our mouth. CO2. We inhale oxygen, we exhale CO2. And now the United States government, the, the old expression, they can't tax the air we breathe. Oh, yes, they can. They're going to be taxing what we exhale. This is, this is just the madness of our age. And what's so funny is we've, we've caught them red-handed. We've caught them in scandal. We've caught them in fraud. We've caught them. We got them recanting. We have scientists now switching. We have a major left-wing scientist like Dennis Rancourt out of Canada who now says global warming is nothing but an imaginary problem of the first world middle class. Uh, major leftists are bailing, saying they can't go on with this anymore because the movement is in tatters. It was never should have been a movement. And Al Gore is making them sick. So Meanwhile, Austin has passed stealth carbon taxes, but they admit it. 2.6 billion over the next three years on power and gas. They just don't care. They just don't care. All, and I saw Schwarzenegger during the Copenhagen summit. He said, I'm going to lead governors and mayors to save America. We're going to do it. And, and so they just don't care. They're just coming in swindling. Well, here's the thing. Here's how you know it's a con. Let's assume that the United Nations is right. Let's assume Al Gore is right on the science. Let's assume Arnold Schwarzenegger is correct on the science. Even if you buy that, the granddaddy of all, the Kyoto Protocol, wouldn't even have a detectable impact on climate using their science. The most shocking thing is we have professors here in the United States, a guy named Professor David, uh, uh, Professor Brown, coming out saying it's the greatest ethical scandal that Washington didn't pass the climate bill in order to, to bring us to a low carbon economy. Well, Obama's own EPA administrator, Lisa Jackson, admitted if the congressional climate bill became law, not only would it not impact temperature, it would even impact global CO2 levels. In other words, it's purely symbolic. And yet we're told by Barbara Boxer, we're told by President Obama that the bill will prevent floods, droughts, hurricanes. It's literally we've advanced no more than the ancient Aztecs, Alex. 1450 or so, they slaughtered thousands of Aztecs in order to bring about an end to droughts. And this is where we are now. We think we can control by eliminating SUVs and unplugging our phone chargers and getting rid of coal and returning back that we can somehow control the weather. This is no, this is no more scientifically advanced. What we're seeing but on Mark, Capitol Hill and from the U.S. than what they did with the witch trials, a bad crop. Let's blame a witch. It's the witch is doing it. They honestly believe we control the Earth's thermostat. This has 
become the madness of our age. It's climate astrology. Well, you're right. Uh, by the mid-level uh, minions, kind of the outer court, they really do believe it. But when you read Club of Rome, UN, and others, it's all about population reduction. And it's about government and, and, and select corporate mafias allowing certain industries to operate and others not to. It's about them funding their buddies with federal and international money through so-called green job initiatives. It's just the big city mafia model taking over the planet. I mean, at the end of the day, the leadership of these groups, from my research, know exactly what they're doing. Can you expound on your research and, and what the end game is for these people, Mark? Well, the end game is they've, they've decided... They want a collective society, and I'm talking about going back to the 1960s. What the environmental movement really is, it's a collection of a ragtag collection of the leftover radical hippies from the 1960s. And I, and I say that seriously. If you look at the first Earth Day, that's what it was. That's what it was known as. George Will and, a, and actually another commentator um, did a great analysis of the entire green movement. It's, they've literally taken the word progress out of the progressive movement. And so what this is, this is a, a existence about bean counters, about internet national bureaucrats and about a collectivism. This is what Claude, um, uh, Vaclav Klaus, the president of the Czech Republic, who knows something about communism, when he said the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union collapsed, the greatest threat to freedom we face is from what he called ambitious environmentalism. And what they've done since the late 60s forward is they've just plug, they've just plug and play. In other words, every scare of the day had the same solutions and the same cause, mankind and the same solutions. We need more government, more regulation. Stay there, Mark. Stay government. there. Stay there. Global yeah. government. Let's come back and talk about global government. Because in their own words, once they get the carbon tyranny in place and can tax you for breathing, they're going to tax the family out of existence. These are human-hating control freaks. We'll be right back. Stay with us.